Ernest Sullivan at the end may be fall in a pot of glue because he likes you and wants you to go back and work for the examiner. Because he's an unmitigated egotist and a professional mouse. Imagine calling me here. There's a better place. Society, Miss Barrett. No, I'm sorry, Miss Gale isn't in yet. May I have a call you? Well, I expect her at any moment. I'll tell her. Goodbye. Funny not carrying it either. You know, the next door neighbor called. She was having a baby and that bunny had to drive her spot to What a beautiful day to be born. I love September. Good morning, Peggy, Karen. Good morning. Hi, Sylvia. But he not here yet? She's been here. I uh, sent her to the morgue. Any messages? Yes, and Mrs. Smith Ingersoll wants you to call, and a Mr. Newton called to remind you about the Miss State Fair contest at 11. He wants the judges there by 10.30. Did Mrs. Ingersoll leave a number? Right here. Call the city desk and ask them to give me a ride with whoever's covering the beauty contest. Hi, Joe. It's Karen. Sylvia wants to ride to the fairgrounds for the beauty contest. Well, aren't you sending a reporter? No, Sylvia can't do it. She's judging. Well, what do you have rewrite men for? You know she won't like it if he takes her. Oh, all right. I'll get the scoop from him and do it myself, but tell him she has to be there no later than 10.30. Does Sylvia make it dirty or something to write a story for the local section? Joe and Sylvia wouldn't be at peace with themselves if they were feuding with each other. Sylvia wouldn't be at peace if she wasn't feuding with the entire human race. Well, she is paid to run the women's section, dear. Then I wish to Jupiter she'd run it. Karen, did you call Joe yet? He's not sending a reporter. You know who will drive you out. Oh, fine. Is that girl not back yet? Uh, she may be a while. I asked her to find a recipe for tamale casserole we ran a few months ago. Ride that girl so hard if you weren't making such elaborate defenses for her. <laughs> I'm keeping my elaborate defenses in readiness for the time I'll need them myself. Can't you ever understand? It's so much simpler to tell and to understand the truth. <laughs> that, my dear Bloodborne columnist, is applied to straight out of Peggy's mailbag. Dear Bored Wife, don't run out on your husband. If he bores you to tears, tell him so. We bore it together. Dear me, is my column so pompous? Please accuse me of anything but pomposity. <laughs> Very well, why do you? Perhaps, but Bunny did have a perfectly legitimate excuse for being late this morning. <laughs> oh, not to Sylvia. Bunny is assisting in the perpetuation of the season. You did a good job on this Ingersoll story, Karen. Mrs. Ingersoll was very pleased. I'm glad I did that story, wasn't you? Yes, but I didn't write it. Bunny did. Bunny, you know, sweet girl, sits at that desk. Occasionally. Oh, climb down, Sylvia. That was a good story. You said it yourself. Peggy, I distinctly told you that Karen was to write that story. Karen was up to her armpits and elderberry pie, and Bunny didn't have anything to do. It was only logical. It was not logical to give the Ingersoll story to that, that, that embryo. The Ingersolls are one of the most important families in the state. Mr. Ingersoll is chairman of the board of the largest bank in town and on the board of trustees of the largest university. And, and I Mrs. <coughs> Ingersoll likes the story. I won't tolerate any subordination, Peggy, from you any more than the others. You're not indispensable, you know. Do you mean I shouldn't like to be indispensable when even Winston Churchill wasn't? <laughs> Don't be flippant, Peggy. There are plenty of good syndicated columns. Bravo for elaborate defenses. Not at all, Karen. I may have disregarded Sylvia's wishes, but I didn't lie to her. Well, whatever your definition, I love you. You know, I might even start reading Peggy's mail back. Loyal, Karen. Well, don't worry, you won't have to suffer too long. Ann Landers is going to replace me any day. <laughs> hey, buddy. <clears throat> is Sylvia utterly purple? No, you've been in the ward looking for a recipe for tamale casserole. Oh, well, thank you, Karen. Did mother call? I don't 
we heard better. We always drink baby beer. Sure. Hello, maternity for please. Hello, I brought Mrs. Franklin Bradley in about an hour ago. Could you tell me if she's had a baby? Really? Well, could I talk to her? Oh, well, thank you anyway. Goodbye. A boy, seven pounds and eight ounces. It's a nice thing for a boy. <laughs> Gee, I'll stay. What, what would you like me to do? Oh, I put some things on your desk. You better finish them up so you can start your Webster story. Smells in 30 years. 
In fact, I think they tell uh, Sylvia that I must make that dreadful excursion again today with her. But who I repeat is the great Hurwitz. You really must look him up, Madison. He's marvelous. He stands in a little yellow booth next to the Industrial Arts Building. He stands there all day and eats fire. Imagine. Oh, I'm glad you told me. I shall avoid the Industrial Arts Building like a blast furnace in July. Ah, oh, gee, turn around to see this Hurwitz guy. Haven't you been to the park? Yesterday I start out the door, Turner and Joe sent me to the engraver for a cut of the Rotary Club president. Be grateful to the Rotary Club and its president, proceeding though his chin may be. I spent the day with a Brahma mole, three bantam roosters, and a blue ribbon sow. <laughs> a in a pear tree. Poor Madison. What? No kidnapped children? How about that? There I was, doing a fast mumbo with a refugee from a sausage factory. When this woman runs up with Ernest Sullivan Jr. So our P-headed city editor sends another photographer all the way from town. Well, never mind. We scoop the examiner. How I would have loved to see the look on Ernest Sullivan's face. His own son gets kidnapped, and we scoop the examiner. Kidnapped? Shades of honest journalism and William Allen White. His nurse said he'd been kidnapped. And maybe she even believed in her anxiety. But the truth is that he was lost. Recovered by a woman with a very sweet face and returned voluntarily to the fairgrounds police. She only had a sweet face because Turner didn't take her picture. Never mind, Horatio Alger. I'll signal when I need your help, if ever. She kept the boy six hours, Abby. Doesn't that sound fishy to you? As a sardine cannery. The story that blondes are dumb is one of the greatest hoaxes of the century. Little Ernie got sick on the merry-go-round, the kidnapper says. So she takes him to her room at the YWCA until he feels better. Yeah. None of us will ever have the pleasure of meeting a blonde as dumb as this one claims to be. I always used to get sick on the merry ground. It was such a delightful way to be miserable. Anyone would know that the child's parents would be worried. That you should go directly to the fairground police. I cannot figure out why she took the boy to her room. Well, I don't know what her reasons were, but I hope Ernest Sullivan Sr. worried just plenty. I'll tell you what was going on behind the sweet face. Ever since the city editor of the examiner's wife died last year, all the females in town have been sharpening their scissors in hopes of helping him clip coupons someday. Madison, dear, how ruthlessly you treat my sense. And how charming will you defend it? Nevertheless, the fact remains that the city editor of the Examiner is our number one eligible male. Oh, number two, Madison. You're too modest. I am, rather. <laughs> but you may be comforted in knowing I shall never marry. It cause too many suicides. <laughs> that reminds me. At what time does the uh, Golden Girl resign as fairest of them all? The judges have to be there by 10.30. Joe wants you to get the scoop on the queen and her attendance, and I'll write it up for him. Well, Sylvia has two broken arms, of course. Well, tell Venus the Milo I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, I'm sure she's already glowing with anticipation. The practicing had a proposal to me. But it will do her no good. Can you imagine what it would be like to sit across the table from that face every morning? She's had a look at so many times I could see it over the morning newspaper. Come along, Paul Blaine. And if you must carry that camera, those clumsy paws of yours, family remember, is not the blue box. Glow, little glow, world He isn't very nice to Julius. Well, don't tell me you've started to glow, Bunny. I always thought you regarded Julius as an overgrown bad boy. That isn't what I meant. I mean, I don't care about Julius. He doesn't mean well. Sometimes Madison reminds me almost of Sylvia. Listen to this, girl. Dear Peggy, my wife used to be captain in the wax, and she has put our household on the points system. Before I can kiss her, I must earn 12 points. And pushing the lawnmower around the backyard is only worth 10. <laughs> I was only a seaman first class. I don't know how to handle these things. <laughs> but the Navy doesn't take red blood in American boys anymore. Madison does remind me of Sylvia. I'll get it. Society, Miss Walker. No, we don't get rid of kittens. Try to classify that. You're welcome. Hey, what do you really think of this 
going to kidnap her? That her picture on the paper made her look very sweet, that she wishes it wasn't there at all, and that she'll never want to see another marrying round as long as she lives. <laughs> you don't think maybe Madison was right about her trying to meet Ernest Solomon? Karen here, Madison is a beauty, and I even enjoy listening to him. But I make a point of it never to believe a word he says. Madison himself doesn't believe a word he says. Oh, Sylvia Madison, Mr. Seary, said he'd be back for you in a few minutes. You mean Joe really isn't sending a reporter? The Miss State Fair contest and he's not sending a reporter? Well, I certainly hope he doesn't think I have time to write a story for him. No, Madison said he'd get this deal for me and I'll write it up during my lunch hour. Well, if you drop dead someday from spending your lunch hours writing for the city desk, I hope that you won't expect Joe to send Lily's. Betty, Peggy tells me that you wrote the Ingersoll story. Yes. The bridesmaid did not carry death notice. Only the bride. But Mrs. Ingersoll only. Only the bride, Betty. You have me a Webster announcement again. I'm working on it. Well, hurry it up. I want to read it before I go. Hereafter, I shall okay all of your wedding and announcement stories. Well, I was sure Mrs. Ingersoll was going to stuff notice. Who to stuff a notice? It wasn't that. Mrs. Ingersoll liked this story. She called this morning to say so herself. Did she really? Yes, you can even ask Karen. She was here. That's right, Benny. Don't mind Sylvia. She's just bristling because she didn't write the story herself. Listen to this, girl. Dear Kay, I am a handsome bachelor of 39. And the women in my office are always inviting me to dinner or to the theater. Recently, however, the elevator operator has been slipping mash notes in my pocket. My problem is this. I have a heart condition, and I can't climb the seven flights of stairs to my office. <laughs> well, at least we know Madison didn't write it. thought it was only on the first floor. Trevor, say that again. Your office is only on the first floor. No, 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 no. Say it again. You look just like Mona Lisa. Say what again? Madison. Madison. No, 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 no. Madison. <laughs> Madison. Very well. Piss. Then I posterity of this generation's contribution to art. Cousin Martha. Aren't you going to take her picture? I'm not a veterinarian. I do not take pictures of diabetic reptiles. From Mona Lisa to diabetic reptiles in one little kiss. Well, if I must listen to women kiss, I may as well drive Sylvia to the fair. Is she ready up? I believe so. You may go in. Duchess, your chariot awaits. I'll be here in a minute. Very well, but you must hurry, Cinderella. At the stroke of ten, it turns back into an unbathed 1953 Hudson. Why don't you take your lunch hour now and come with us? I can't leave before deadline. I've scouts have work to do. Who's late this morning? Still meet deadlines. I don't think I like newspaper work. Karen, take care of this layout, will you? Bunny, where's the Ed Webster announcement? Here's the first part. I'm not quite through. Oh, well, I don't have time to wait for it. Give the information to Peggy, and she'll write it. Sylvia, I haven't written an announcement in years. I wouldn't know the difference between a benedict and a benefactor. That's why that's Betty's own story. She got it by herself. I said it. Peggy will write it. Well, this one, I can come with us. No, thanks. <laughs> Miss Gale speaking. Oh, hi, Joe. Yes, he's here. All right, I'll tell him. Old Scoop want me? Julius. Me? <laughs> what for? 
Well, in between four letter words, he said something to the effect that he wasn't paying you to carry flashbulbs and ride Ferris. Oh, cousin Martha, that guy has eyes to see his pants. One of the requisites for a successful newspaper career, Julius Boy, <laughs> is bold. And don't fret, you can, uh, you can buy me a candied apple next year. Are you coming, Madison? Without a chaperone? Anything for the Evening Times. I don't come back, clean my desk. <laughs> Hey, uh, Bunny, um, did you bring any of those orange and date cookies today? Julia, dear, don't you think you'd better go find out what Joe wanted? Joe wouldn't want anything to swallow my fun. Oh. Oh, um, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go. I, you know, I'm gonna take it. Sure. <laughs> I know there's an angel who can be stuck in the Oh, I'd want them to step in the beer. This is a private fight between Sylvia and me. I'm sorry she's taking it out on you. Between Sylvia and you? What about? Oh, nothing important. Don't worry about it. I don't. But why don't you say you should write my story for me? I don't know. I guess she thinks she's demoting me or something. I promised Mrs. Webster to be in the paper today. I guess you'll write first for her too. I don't think so. In fact, I don't think I'll have time to write any of it all, at all. It would take you so long to give me all the information and everything. I think you'd better do it. But Sylvia told you to. Did she? So don't remind me again, and maybe I'll forget. You can't forget what Sylvia says, just like that. Oh, I'm very good at forgetting what Sylvia says. In fact, I think I've forgotten nearly everything she ever told me. Hey, you have to write it. Sylvia won't find me, and I promised Mrs. Webster in the paper today. Hmm, how great is that to us? Of course, you could give the information to the examiner. You didn't tell Mrs. Webster which paper, did you? Karen, will you write it? Oh, Bunny, Sylvia doesn't really scratch. That red stuff on her hands is fingernail polish. <laughs> it's your story. You write it. If there's any trouble, I'll take the blame. I don't know if I should. You promised Mrs. Webster here. Well. Does anyone need anything from the back room? Oh, yes. Would you take my column with you? Your column? Yes, I wrote it yesterday. Oh, well, bless my little old waxy ears. Didn't you just tell Sylvia you were too busy writing this to do the Webster story? I believe I said I was busy. See? You know, I really must write to you sometimes. Dear Peggy, I have a problem. A woman with whom I work has accused me of using elaborate defenses. Karen, can I ever make you understand how to split hairs? Frankly, no. It's a pastime I find excruciatingly dull. Um, Joe didn't want anything. Bunny, uh, will, will, will you go to the fairgrounds to meet tonight? Before freshmen are singing? Can we talk about it later, Julius? I have to finish this story. <laughs> how do you women can get so excited over the color of peppermint candy if someone serves it after your tea? Oh, hey, hey, talk to Joe, homie. Don't you think you ought to do your own talking, Julius? No, Joe would do anything for you. But I don't want to be a photographer. I don't understand all those Fs and numbers and things. You know what I mean. That cousin Martha, you want me to be a copy boy all my life? Well, it would be easier than being a photographer. You do want what's easiest, don't you? I was a photographer for our high school yearbook. Hmm, and telling Joe about it hasn't helped, has it? Uh, what do you expect me to do? Peggy, will you read through this now? Bunny, dear, you've been here three months, nearly as long as Karen. You don't have to read your stuff. But Sylvia said that Sylvia will have forgotten that she said anything when she gets back from her beauty pageant. Well, I'll go to the back room and see if Karen wants to read it then. If I was Bunny, I'd tell Sylvia to go sew her head. Money takes too much gum. That's funny. Funny just said the same thing about you and Madison. Turner? Madison Turner is the greatest photographer the Times ever had. I'm sure of it. I'll take anything from Turner. Joe's the one. I don't hear you telling Joe to soak his head. I'd like that Joe listen to just one thing I say. Maybe you talk too much, dear. Maybe you should show him. Show him? How to soak his head? Well, it isn't quite what I had in mind. I just don't get you, baby. Do you think any 
girl ever became Miss State Fair by telling the judges that she looked good in a bathing suit? So you're saying I should show Joe I can take pictures? Fat chance! I so much as touched Turner's camera, and Joe makes it sound like a rocket ship going off. Well, maybe if Joe didn't see you pick up the camera, if you just happened to scoop the examiner. I did it, like if I just happened to be there when the governor gets shot at or something? Oh, wait, then I wouldn't. <laughs> well, you won't if you don't get off that sofa. I do, and Joe sent me to the drugstore for corn plaster or something. You'd be surprised at the things that happen on the way to the drugstore. Not to me. I'll just have to think of something else. Peggy, how come you never married? I guess no one ever asked me. Ha! <laughs> oh, come on. I bet there's lots of guys. I bet there still are. You know, if I was just 20 years older myself. Dear me, 20 years. Well, come around in another 20, and I'll probably still be here. Hey, Turner's old enough. Old enough for what? For you. He couldn't be. He still has nearly all of his hair. But he's he's really a really great guy. Peggy, you two make a swell pair. <clears throat> Here. Do you want to know a little secret? <clears throat> I'm really quite happy as an old maid. Have you ever been in love? If you really want to rescue someone from the horrible state of spinsterhood, maybe you should find a more likely candidate. Funny maybe. She won't even go to the fair with me. Julius, this is this. Dear Peggy. Seven months ago, I told my wife that her cheese fondue wasn't as good as my mother's. She got mad and sent me home to my mother. <laughs> For seven months, I've been eating cheese fondue. I'm getting tired of it now, and I want to go back to my wife. She makes awfully good apple fritters. <laughs> Ooh, apple fritters. Buddy, have we ever had a recipe for apple fritters? I don't think so. Hmm. I can't believe it. Thirteen letters in today's mail. And every single one is from a man. Hey, that is funny. We always thought this is the women's page. I remember when men read my announcement story. I know what it does. I still can't believe it. Sorry. Well, me. maybe all the women in the city just don't have any more problems, Peggy. You talk them all. Is this the obituaries? I want to bury my husband. Not uh, here, I hope. Julius. <laughs> there, there, dear. No when did he die? Well, he isn't exactly dead yet. I mean, I've got to kill him first. <laughs> <laughs> now there's one.
obvious, darling. Of course you can't come. But that girl does give me an idea. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be delightful to have an inn with Ernest Sullivan's maid? Oh, don't be a snob, darling. Of course I'm not older than Ernest Sullivan. <coughs> oh, oh, well, maybe a teeny bit. Well, maybe a year or so, but what's a year or two? Besides, a lady doesn't ask another lady's age. Don't just stand there like a dodo. Come in. I'll talk to you later after the interview. Goodbye. If you're going to be a professional eavesdropper, buddy, then I suggest that you wear rubber-heeled shoes. Here, take this to the flavor. Are you sure you feel ready to talk now? Yes, I think so. Well, why don't you have a seat and tell us about your music? Well, I'm not sure how to tell it. Why don't you start at the beginning? All right. Well, Mama broke her arm. She fell off the tractor. Was your husband on, on the tractor too? No, just Mama. She fell off the tractor and couldn't make the cherry pie. Or your husband? No, I didn't have a husband then. Oh dear, I'm so confused. I don't know how to tell it. Well, why don't you just tell it in your own way, dear? And we'll try not to interrupt. All right, well, Mama fell off the tractor and she couldn't make the cherry pie for the chair making pie contest. And Mr. Seaton had already bought a ticket for the bus to go to the to the fair. <coughs> oh, well, we have a bus, well, a train that goes by Grover's Corner, too, but the bus goes oftener. Well, Mr. Seaton already had the bus tickets, and I know all of Mama's recipes, so Mr. Seaton said I could go represent Grover's Corner at the cherry making pie contest at the state fair. So that's why you came to the fair, for the pie baking contest? Yes. Well, did you win? Oh, dear, I couldn't find where I was to go. Oh, dear, I have to give Mr. Seaton his money back. He gave me $20 along with the bus ticket. Well, did you ask anyone? Oh, yes, I did, but everyone was busy watching this morning eating fire. Well, there's this nice man who, well, he told me where to go. I was on my way to the police station, and there was this boy. Ernie Sullivan, Jr.? Yes. Well, there he was, crying, saying, I lost it, I lost it. At first I thought he was saying I'm lost. What had he lost? Tickets for the merry-go-round. His nurse gave him two dollars worth of merry-go-round tickets and told him to wait there for her until she got back. Well, I picked him up to wipe his nose and I could understand him much better. So you took him on the merry-go-round? Two dollars worth. Have you ever been two dollars worth? Well, not all at one time. Oh, now I know what it feels like to be the second head of the clock. Oh, were you sick, dear? Oh, not till I got off. It was like the world had stopped turning. But the paper said it was the boy who was sick. Oh, he was. He was losing the candied apple I bought him earlier. There he was, losing the candied apple I bought him, me getting sicker by the minute, and his nurse still not back yet. Well, a nice man finally helped us. Thank you. A nice man finally helped us to the police station, but no one was there. So we walked to the YWCA. But the YWCA is nearly four miles from the fairgrounds. Well, it didn't seem that far. Oh, besides, I used to walk five miles to school every day. But you still haven't told us about your husband. I'm trying to. Well, we'll try not to interrupt. Well, I fell asleep in my room at the YWCA. When I woke up, I wasn't sure how long it had been, but I knew the Army's nurse would be worried. So I woke him up. He started crying, saying he didn't want to go home without me. Oh, that woman must be horrible. All the things he's been saying about her. Well, I knew the learning's nurse would be worried, so we went back to the fairgrounds. You didn't walk. Oh, no. I knew the learning's folks would be worried, too, so we took the bus. Well, when we got there, there were all these people waiting there for us. All these women photographers and, and the learning's nurse and, and, and her boyfriend. All these policemen. There must have been at least seven. I couldn't figure out where they'd all been. Well, well Ernie started crying and saying he didn't want to go home without me. So when we saw Mr. Sullivan, he was all red-faced. Yeah, breathing fire, no doubt. Oh, no, he was really very nice after I told him everything. Oh, Mr. Sullivan was so very nice. Oh, he was so very sweet. And Mama doesn't need me back at the farm now that Mary lives out of school, so I told him I was married. 
married. Married? Why on earth would you tell him that? Oh, well, I thought with little Ernie's nurse being so white crazy and everything, he'd want a nice, dependable married woman to look after little Ernie. But he didn't? No. This morning I came down for breakfast and, and little Ernie was crying. Oh, I stayed in the guest bedroom last night. Well, Mr. Sullivan pulled me aside and said that he'd been thinking about it and that he wants a woman to stay at the house to watch little Ernie. Then the married woman just wouldn't do. So what did you say? I couldn't think of anything to say. Sometimes my mind just doesn't think very fast. <laughs> so now you want to get rid of your husband? Oh, well, if you could just print something in the paper about him dying. Not very much. Just a line or two. I can show Mr. Sullivan. Oh, fine. Wouldn't that be rather troublesome, though, dear? I mean, staging a funeral. What if Mr. Sullivan were decide to, to decide to attend? Oh, dear. I hadn't thought of that. Oh, but I could go back to Rose Corner. No one will learn me not having a mother. And that woman watching him all the time? Oh, he contributed to a jumbled language. And besides, Mama doesn't need me back at the farm now that Mary Lou's out of school. Oh, dear. Well, you said yourself, dear, that Mr. Sullivan was really very nice. I'm sure if you were to just sit down and talk to him and explain to him why you told him where you were married and how much you wanted the job, he'd be really very understanding. Why, oh, no. Peggy, will you come in here a minute? Yes, Sylvia, in a minute. Remember, if you want to gain little Ernie's trust in you, what would he think about you if he found out about your having tried to deceive his father? Well, I need to make a joke of my own life out of him. Oh, dear! Are you coming, Peggy? Yes, Sylvia. You think about it, will you, dear? Do you really think the learning finding out about my husband will turn him into a juvenile delinquent? Do you want to know what I really think? Oh, yes. I think little Ernie needs you very, very much. You do? Mm -hmm. But I think his father needs you even more. Mr. Sullivan? Yes, as a matter of fact, I know his father pretty well. I used to work for him for three and a half years. Oh, were you a working nurse? <laughs> no, I was a reporter on Mr. Sullivan's newspaper. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> You are just what Mr. Sullivan needs. An understanding woman to talk to him at night when he comes home tired from the office. His wife's been dead for a year, you know. Oh, yes, I know. And he hasn't had an understanding woman to take an interest in him or talk to him in all that time. You will talk to him, won't you? Oh, yes. Then I'll do it. Do what? Get you the job as little Ernie's nurse. You will? How? Well, it's only for little Ernie's sake and for his father's, so we mustn't tell Peggy, not just yet. She might not understand. All right, if you say so. But, um, you'll help us, won't you, Bunny? Help you what? Get Lucy made the job of little Ernie's nurse. It's for little Ernie's sake and his father's. Well, I don't know. I don't know why you won't tell Peggy. <laughs> it's very simple, Bunny. You see, Lucy May told Mr. Sullivan that she was married in order to get the job as little Ernie's nurse. And then Mr. Sullivan told her that he didn't want a married woman, so now we have to get rid of her husband. In a ladylike way, of course. None whatsoever. I should know. I worked for him for three and a half years. <laughs> In a newspaper. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so now we have to get our husband safely out of this world. Or at least out of the country. The Foreign Legion. No, that's too corny. He'd never go for it. The Army will do. That's it. The Army. Couldn't we just give him malaria or something? <laughs> well, let's not get carried away. The Army's fine, but maybe a medal or two. It. Madison's picture. We can use Madison's picture. What picture? The one on his desk in his corporal's uniform. You mean he keeps a picture of himself? You mean you've never seen it? No, it's got so many flash bulbs and tripod photos that they can't see anything else. Bunny, you are about to have the thrill of your young life. You're about to see why the Japanese surrendered. Lucy May, you know the first aid room downstairs? Yes. Well, the first door to your left is the dark room. There are three desks just outside. Madison's is the one in the middle. Now, he's not there right now, but don't let anyone see you. You want me to steal a picture? Let's say we're borrowing it. Well, on second thought, go ahead and steal it. He'll probably be thoroughly flattered. Well, <laughs> right, if you say so. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd like to tell me what you're up to. What I am up to, as you say, is repaying a nasty little man for ruining three and a half of the best years of my life. Well, Lucy may 
face him sex though. Why do you have to take it out on her? Funny, I think I remind you that she came to me. She asked me to get her the job as a learning nurse. I'm merely fulfilling her father's dream. Besides, you wouldn't deny me the practical joke of my career now, would you? Examiner City Desk, please. Hello, is Mr. Sullivan in? Well, do you know when he'll be back? Well, could you tell him that Karen Barrett called and that it's urgent? No, no, he has my number. And don't forget to tell him that it's urgent. Thank you. Goodbye. Darn, they don't know when he'll be back. I hope you'll remember what I said to you. I hope so too, Sylvia. <laughs> Is this 
a newspaper. Or a bowl hole. <laughs> Madison, dear. The kidnapping story was old yesterday. And the poor girl's been put through too much already. She was nearly on the verge of hysteria earlier. That's a fine way for a newspaper woman to talk. Why are you so interested anyway? Do you know Ernest Solomon? My dear Trevor, everyone knows Ernest Solomon. Well, does he know you? Since you put it that way, no. So he wouldn't recognize you if he saw you. Tut tut, Sergeant Freddy. I know my rights. No more questions till I've talked to a lawyer. Yes, Karen, what is it you're up to? I am up to finding out why Madison is behaving so suspiciously. And I am merely behaving like any normal newspaper photographer. And entrenching myself outside the ladies' room. Care to come along? Yes, as a matter of fact. Karen, wait. Won't you tell me what it is, dear? No, what is? Very well, dear. I'll still get that all up via the ladies' room if she needs me. Ah, how much? Well, all of me prays the mountain just came to Mohammed. How much? That is why you called me, isn't it? Peggy, hey, buddy, I'd like for you to meet your arch enemy, Ernest Sullivan, city editor of that unspeakable yellow sheet who's a fresh fresh and butter in his house called his own Swiss How do you do? Hello, Ernie. It's been a long time, Peg. I didn't know you two knew each other. Of course, everyone knows Ernie. Madison just said so. Madison? He works downstairs. Uh, let me look at you, Peg. I've thought of you often over this last year, s since Linda died. Dear Ernie, how you used to turn my head with that sweet talk of yours. But, aside from being a hard old newspaper woman now, I know you've been much too busy eluding designing females, pestering Karen to come back and work for you, catching kidnappers and giving our poor city editor an ulcer trying to keep up with you. You've never married then, Pat? Newspaper women don't marry. <laughs> well, not Peggy anyway. She's eternal. Dear me, how formidable you make me. Like Athena or Ishtar. Or were they both married? <laughs> Peggy, will you come in here a minute? Why, Ernest Sullivan, how delightful to see you. So what are you doing here? Oh, I'm simply returning the compliment you paid me last spring and stealing your reporter. <laughs> really? No such luck, Sylvia. I call Ernest because Lucy May wants to talk to him. Lucy May? Yes, Lucy May Palmer. She's downstairs. Will you come with me? Oh, surely not this instant. After all, it's not every day that Ernest Sullivan pays us a visit. Your phone message said it was urgent. Yes, Lucy May is very anxious to talk to you. Oh, must you be? Well, you must come again, Mr. Sullivan, when there aren't so many distractions. Peggy, are you coming? Yes, Sylvia. Okay, how much? How much what? How much are you making here? You are a louse. How much? None of your business. That isn't why I called you. I'll give you 75 a week. I make 80. 85. Not for 185. That isn't why I called you. Well, for Pete's sake, why did you call me? Lucy May, really. She really needs that job. And not just for the money, but to get away from her own problems. You see, her husband's been overseas with the Army, and she's terribly lonely. She never told me her husband was overseas. So that's because you never gave her the chance. I could never stand to have a woman like that around. She won't bother you. She's promised me she won't bother you. She rattles and rattles and never says anything at all. So let her rattle to little Ernie. You know, it's funny how that kid took to her. Never could figure that out. So it's uh, all settled then? I guess it would make the boy happy. Wonderful. Let's go tell her. I'll give you 85 a week, Karen, and the desk by the window. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan and Lee, he went downstairs with Karen. Oh, I was hoping to get a chance to talk to him about Lucy May. 
It would be so nice for both of them if you would hire her. I think he's going to. Really? So that's what Karen was up to. Yes. Why were you all behaving so mysteriously then? I don't really know. Karen sort of makes projects out of things. Don't I know? You are in love with the ones. Mr. Soldier. I guess I loved the whole world when I was young. I'm sorry. I didn't cry. No, I'm sorry, dear. Yes, I guess I loved him. He married Linda, though. She's been dead a whole year. I've been dead a long time. Peggy, hey, you're the most live person I've ever known. I yes, I'm eternal and I'm formidable. I don't suppose you'd like to tell me about it. I mean, you don't have to. Now, I don't mind, dear. Though there's not much to tell. Ernie and I were reporters together on the Examiner. We were never engaged, though I always thought he planned to marry me. Well, Linda's father bought the paper and. He was always buying and selling things. And so she came down to his office at the newspaper quite often to visit. And Mr. Sullivan married the boss's daughter. Nobody, it wasn't like that. Ernie didn't care about the money. He was made city editor after the father sold the examiner. Well, what did happen then? They just fell in love, I guess. I could see it in their faces, and I could tell they didn't have the heart to tell me. So I just packed up and left. I've been here ever since. Eight years. You left without a fight? Hey, I can't make that of you. No, why not? I can't imagine you ever being afraid of anything. The way you stand with the Sylvia? Hmm. I didn't think of it as being afraid. It just made more sense for one person to be unhappy rather than three. Well, I would have fought for her. You would? Of course I would. Any woman would. Any woman who wasn't a coward. So you think it was cowardly of me to give him up when he didn't love me? Did he tell you he loved you? No, I don't suppose he did. That's funny, but I never thought of it as being cowardly. Oh, Peggy, I'm sorry. You need to apologize, dear. I'm sorry for everything. Everything that happened. Sorry for me. Dear buddy, you should see some of these letters I get. And then you find out what real trouble is. Um, it's one of those trite old paradoxes, isn't it? The old maid handing out marital advice. Well, I guess as soon as I started worrying about other people's problems, I sort of forgot about my own. No, but I've had a good time. You need to talk as if it were over. You're only 32. Pretty. Lots of women don't marry until then. Lots of women are still in their ways with you. Imagine what would have happened if I married a man who squeezed the toothpaste out of the wrong end of the tube. What forbid me to wear my smocks? Besides, I think you and Julius ought to start directing your best banking at each other. Why Julius? He had me wrapping her my way to the altar this morning. With him? No, not for another 20 years. With Madison. Madison? How revolting! Not at all. Madison would make me a very fine husband. I doubt if I'd even have to give up my smock. How can you even joke about it? See, you just admitted it. I'm better off the way I am. Let's see, who can you marry off now? Julius, maybe. Okay, for heaven's sake, take off that dirty smock and on your way up. Who's on his way up? I'm gonna put on some lipstick, will you? Look, you've got a smudge on your cheek. Karen, whatever is this about? Well, Ernest, of course, is on his way up. Dear me, I wish you would at least thought it was Prince Rania. You're gonna get that smudge off your cheek. Now, where is your lipstick? Karen, dear, you saw me this way ten minutes ago. You let me go on about him all these months, and I didn't even know you knew him, much less have been engaged. I've never been engaged to anyone. Peggy, will you at least take off the dirty smock? Not even if it were, Prince Rainier. Peggy, you're impossible. Dear me, because I insist on my constitutional right to remain a happy spinster. First Julius, then Bunny, and now you. Well, poo to the lot of you. Peg, I just 
came to say goodbye. Oh, why don't you uh, come sit down over here, Ernest? Bunny and I were just on our way into uh, Magnolia's office. Oh, Cameron. <laughs> goodbye, Ernest. We'll see you through the people. Goodbye, Mr. Collins. Happy to have met you. I'll give you 85 a week, Karen. Well, it is good to be back, Peg. That? Don't tell me the city editor of the Examiner has been on enemy territory before. You know what I mean. It's good to see you again. Well, we must come again then. I'm always here, and maybe eventually we can break down Karen's resistance. <laughs> maybe. You know, Beth tells me that Lucy May is going to work for you. Yes. Hey, Where is it she's from again? The Rover's Corn. It's funny, but I don't think I've ever been there before. Well, I wonder how big of a place it is. Look, maybe I'd better leave. May I call you sometime? Of course, and if there's anything I can do to help you break down Karen's resistance, just let me know. You'd rather I... Hey! Wait, 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 wait,
bathroom. The bathrooms are right over there. The ladies are first, and then are the next one. If you go all the way around, that's where the concessions are. And if you... Oh, how come you don't let me say anything? <laughs>
Mads, this pink shirt. I won't be needing it anymore. Where on earth did you find it? Isn't there something very charming about Madison? Well, I didn't find it. It was here all along. Well, I won't be needing it anymore. Very charming indeed. Too bad he never got married. It makes some woman a very fine husband. That's what Karen thought. Really? I won't be needing more, so please tell Karen thank you for me. Karen gave you Madison's picture? No. I guess I sort of stole it. Stole it? Lucy, you may have put it up before. Karen said Mr. Turner would be flattered. A little excited, anyway. Well, I won't be needing the picture anymore, so please tell Karen thank you for me. And Miss Gale, too. Miss Gale? Sylvia helped you take Madison's picture? No, for the lunches. Lunches? Every Tuesday in the envelope room. I'm sorry, Lucy Major. I don't think I understand you. I'm going back to Grover's Corner, so I won't be needing the picture or the lunches anymore, so please, tell her one thank you for me. What's the matter? What did Mr. Sullivan say when you told him you were leaving? He didn't say anything. I can't imagine him not saying anything. I know he likes you, and no Ernie adores you. I can't tell him. I'm just going. Lucy May, aren't you happy there, dear? I'm very happy. Yay! There, there. Why don't you come in and sit down and tell me about it? I don't know how to tell it. Has something happened to your mother back at the farm? No. I just can't work for Mr. Sullivan. Did he say something to you, dear? What did he say? He doesn't say anything. <laughs> there, there. You just have a good cry. And when you feel more like talking, just tell me about it. I'm all right now. All right, now why on earth would you go back to Grover's Corner? The game. What game? The game I played with little Ernie. I guess it wasn't a very good game. What kind of game was it, dear? It was a game I used to play back in Grover's Corner with my nephew. He's four, just like little Ernie. Well, it was my turn to fall down and... Fall down? Yes. Is it some sort of wrestling game? No. Doctor. One person falls down and the other person pretends to be the doctor. Only we cry first. Cry. You know, before the doctor comes? Well, it was my turn to fall down and I was at the bottom of the stairs. And little well, Ernie started to cry. Mr. Sullivan came in saying, Good glory! Just like that. Good glory! I guess little Ernie decided Daddy wanted to play too, so he told him that I had fallen down the stairs and was unconscious. I was too embarrassed to say anything. But that's not so bad, dear. I don't see why you had to go back to Rover's corner over that. Oh no, but it was what happened next. Mr. Sullivan rushed over and he pushed back my hair and he kissed me just on the forehead, but he kissed me. When did you say this happened? Sunday, Sunday afternoon. I see. Well, he kissed me just on the forehead and then he said, Oh, 
violation. I got the president's name wrong. Come on. No, dear. We all make mistakes. Even Sylvia makes mistakes. I can't take it anymore, Peggy. Oh. I've decided to go to work for my uncle in his office. He says he needs another girl. And what kind of work was it your uncle did? Plumbing. <laughs> plumbing. I don't know very much about plumbing, but I'm sure it should be very fascinating. Putting all those pipes and rings and things together. All this you want to have to do that, William. You're trying to tell me I'll be utterly wretched. I didn't say that, did I? Well, I couldn't be any more wretched than I am here. Couldn't you, dear? I try so hard to please Sylvia, but nothing I ever do is right. I'm sure your uncle would be much more understanding. Hey, what am I going to do? I'll hate plumbing. I know I'll hate plumbing. But I can't stay here. And I couldn't afford to go to college even if I wanted to. What am I going to do? And I can't very well decide for you, can I, dear? Why don't you just take some time and think about it? I have thought. Bunny, I'm sure the answer's inside of you. If you just keep looking, I'm sure it's there. Hey! Will you kindly tell that shiny painted boy scout who really wants this newspaper? Please talk to him, Peggy. Who? To the poor man's Pulitzer, seated behind the city desk. Joe? What's the matter with you? Joe? No, please, Peggy, you have to talk to him right now. Can't you wait just a few minutes, dear? I'm expecting to come. But Peggy, you bother me. Julius, whatever for? <laughs> the mom says. I started to go to the photographic exhibit with Turner. Two folks that will sign them verbatim. Julius is always goofing off with Madison. I don't think being a copy boy is a very dignified. If I could just work in the dark room. You won't even let me in the dark room. Julius, dear, I think we'd better go talk to Joe. Oh, dear Peggy, would you? He'll do anything you say. Hey, are you coming, Turner? I refuse to engage in any more verbal fisticuffs with that infinitive splitter. Besides, it upsets my spleen to see Peggy waste your seduction on him. I have a delicate spleen. But he won't even let me in the dark room! <clears throat> Do you know anything about plumbing? Only that I like mine indoors. No, I mean, do you think I would be happy in an office where they did plumbing? I should think you'd be fairly unhappy in any office where they didn't do plumbing. But don't tell me that a story I didn't record as the scratch the last bit of bridal lace. I don't know what to do. I can't stand it here any longer. I don't know what to do. Well, you you could put Tabasco sauce in Sylvia's lemonade. I might even help you. I really think she would help me decide what to do. It's so miserable. What, with the professional problem solvers seated right next to you? I you won't tell me what to do. You know, Madison, I've been reading your poem pretty carefully lately. And I've realized she never tells anyone what to do. She just sort of sits back and waits for them to work out their own problems. Minimal activity. What? Minimal activity. That's what my psychoanalyst calls it. Do you were a psychoanalyst? I did. For six months and six hundred dollars. Until I discovered that Peggy is easier to talk to and her soap is just comfortable. Poor Dr. Weinberg. Four messy years in medical school, plus that dreadful residency, to discover what Peggy knew all along. Minimal activity. What is minimal activity? Well, it's easy. You just kind of, you just kind of lie here, and free associate, saying all the nasty little things are pop into your head. It takes a lot of years, of course, to unloose all the vituperation you've bottled up over a lifetime. And meanwhile, the doctor's collecting fifteen dollars every half an hour for it. He was more than just listening. Indeed he does. Twitches. It took him ten years to learn how to twitch properly. <laughs> That's why he can collect fifteen dollars every half an hour for it. But Peggy, alas, who twitches instinctively and very charmingly, I may add, receives about the most paltry sum for her minimal activity. So minimal activity is twitching? <laughs> we will demonstrate. Yes? Bring that chair. <clears throat> this chair? Yes. <clears throat> now, I 
want you to twitch your left eyebrow. Like this? More pensively, please. Like this? Uh, yes. Now, that which I, my dear boy, is what it means. I am a learned doctor who has studied under men, who has studied under Freud himself. Surely you would not try to deceive me. Now, twitch your right eyebrow. Like that? More superciliously, please. Very good. Dr. Reinberg could not have done better, couldn't have done better himself. And you don't even have a mole at the end of your right eyebrow. I think it was the mole that sent me a thing. I think I should get it back to My dear young lady, I have to demonstrate minimal activity. Now, the left which I've already explained, the right which means, my dear boy, you're reaching Universal. Girl, deeper. Deeper. Really, Hudson, I have a lot of work to do. My dear buddy, how in the world do you ever expect to solve your problems if you refuse to understand the principles of psychoanalysis? Well, do you think it'll help? Of course it'll help. Okay. Uh, now, we'll demonstrate. I'm a patient. I have reassociated them. You're the doctor. You do not speak. You practice minimal activity. Every time you think my subconscious, I stumble upon something fundamental. Twitch your right eyebrow. Understand. I twitch them. Well, 
down among the last three. <laughs> so you've never been married to her then? I? Married to that minus IQ? Certainly not. And you may tell Miss Vacant Head that I hope she's well insured. Because I plan on bringing suit to my lawyer for libel. You were her husband. She she has this picture of you in, in your corporal's uniform. She has my picture. <laughs> She's returned it, Madison. Mary, find it on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> that cat! That egotistical cat! Don't take Madison too seriously, Ernie. We don't. But you didn't hear it, Peg. You, you didn't hear the things he said about Lucy May. Yes, I did. Forgive me for eavesdropping here. Well, then how can you just stand there so calmly? Perhaps it's because I'm not in love with Lucy May. Peg! You haven't admitted it, even to yourself, have you, Ernie? Peg, Will I... you speak with the Madison, then, for helping you figure it out before you, she goes back to Grover's Corner? Who said she was going back to Grover's Corner? Just a few minutes ago. But, but she couldn't go, just like that. Not without saying anything to me. Well, bless my little old myopic eyes, if it isn't the city editor of the examiner. Perhaps Karen can tell you why. Karen can tell you why what? Can you? Why is she leaving? Why is she leaving? Lucy May. I don't even know where she's going. Grover's Corner. Really? Why? <laughs> well, it seems as if... Ernie just met Madison, and Madison just told him he's not married to Lucy May, and Lucy May, in the meantime, is too embarrassed to tell Ernie that she lied, and so, of course, she doesn't know that Ernie knows, and she's decided to go back to Grover's Corner. That is complicated, isn't it? <laughs> oh, well, it was a good joke while it lasted. A joke? Oh, I'm sorry, Ernie, but I was rather annoyed with you that day, the way you kept pestering me to come back to work for you. So there I was mentally putting sneezing powder in your aftershave lotion when this unbelievable little blonde walks in. You mean Lucy May? Well, it seemed like the perfect setup, getting her to annoy you for me. I know how much you hate women with flapping tongues. <laughs> so anyway, since she'd already told you she was married and her husband seemed to be standing in the way of her annoying you for me, I merely put him in the army and shipped him overseas with the aid of Madison's picture. So... She's never been married to anyone then? No, oh, she only told you that because she thought you'd want a married woman to look after little Ernie. But you did. Does Madison know about his picture? Yes, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd call out the National Guard by now. Well, it seemed like a wonderful joke at the time on all three of you. You, Lucy May, and Madison. Good heavens, Ernest, are you sick? No, just confused, I guess. Well, She's gone now, and as you say, the joke is over. Didn't I tell you? She hasn't left yet. She hasn't? Well, where is she? At my place? No, as a matter of fact, she's downstairs. You see, after she told me what happened on Sunday, I figured she'd better talk to you before deciding definitely. She told you what happened Sunday? You forgive me, won't you, dear? I'm rather used to listening to other people's problems by now. Well, where downstairs is she? In the first aid room, right now, I think. I'll go get her. I guess that's the least I can do. No, Karen, I'll go get her. Hey, I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say, are you there? Now, where did I put those proofs? Peg, are, are you sure this is the way you want it? What, what, dear? I know they're around here somewhere. I, I cut off my own arm before I hurt you. You know that, don't you? What do you mean? What an unpleasant alternative. Listen, Peg, they'll be back in a minute. Will you please just talk to me? Why, Ernest Sullivan, how delightful to see you again. What are you doing here? Peg and I had a luncheon date. Oh, not the mayor's luncheon, I hope. As a matter of fact, yes. But something has come up and Ernie and I won't be able to make it. Oh, that is too bad. I was hoping we could all ride together. 
well another time then. Well, tell Karen that I won't be gone long. I just have to make an appearance in these things, you know. I hope to see you again soon, Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping my head screwed on. Where are those groups? You're not being very helpful, you know. Aren't I? Here? I do need to be helpful. What can I do to be helpful? Well, for starters, you could stop scurrying around like a nervous chicken and sit down and talk to me. All right. Where shall I sit? What are you doing here? Ernie, you've met our copy boy, Julius, haven't you? You need to talk again, do you? No. Julius? <laughs> Still didn't change his mind, did he? No, it doesn't, Martha. I don't want to be a copy boy all my life. Did Peggy tell me it was my chance? I've looked until I'm dizzy. Peg, could we be alone somewhere? Okay, I'll go. See what I mean? I'm never around if there's anything worth taking a picture of because all anybody ever does is send me out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Julius. I wonder if I can ever make him understand. For just a second, could you please try to make me understand? That's right. Where was I? I believe I was about to be helpful, wasn't I? Forget it. All right. But Mr. Sullivan, Karen said she told you everything. I wasn't really married to that picture. It was just easier for me to be married than stage a funeral. I'm so sorry I lied to you. I promise I'll never do it again. You hate me, don't you? I could never hate you. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, I couldn't hate you either. Oh, Lucy May. Oh, Ernest. <laughs> City desk. <coughs> Hi, Joe. Is Julius there? Yes, send him up here right away. Tell him the governor's been shot at. Would you please tell me things I wanted to tell you? Would you please tell me what is going on here? Well, it looks as if your little practical joke is boomeranged into a Cupid's arrow. Maybe that is the next metaphor, isn't it? Oh, no! Oh, Ernest, just think what might have happened if she hadn't just broken it. If who hadn't broken what? If Mama hadn't broken her arm. Where's Sylvia? I've got to find Sylvia. She went to lunch, dear. What is it? Karen, I guess you'd better go. Well, where? To the airport. Shop into a forced landing with a spring section. <gasps> Never even me. We 
almost be needed. Platitude number 653 from Peggy's mailbag. Well then, here's platitude 654. Borrowed from Shakespeare, by the way. To thine own self be true, and it must follow the night to day. Thou canst then not be false to any man. <laughs> You're referring to me, I suppose, in your charming little snide way. Are you being true to yourself, Karen? What do you mean true? If you hurry, you can catch Jacques too. It's the challenge you've been waiting for. Ernie said himself he didn't have a man who could do it. Go back, Karen. Go back and be yourself. To let your self be true. Oh, I'll miss you, Peggy. Well, it's not as if the Times is on the other side of the world from the Examiner. Even your city editor has been here twice in the last few months. <laughs> oh, I'll be back for the rest of my thing. But you may tell La Gale to blow herself out. Oh, wait for me! Someone's gonna have to read me what two of Karen's done the work of the examiner now. Oh, I can't wait to see Sylvia's face when she learns she met Jacques and Sue. Society, Miss Owens. Hello, Mrs. Jacobson. Yes, we're New Mexico City. And what was your daughter's name again? Olga. Yes. Yes, it will be in tomorrow evening's paper. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, Ernie. Aren't you feeling well, Peggy? Oh, yes. I was just trying to figure out where I put my smock. That's right. I filed it under the Z's. There wasn't enough room in the S's. How you stand to wear these medieval torture instruments all day long, I'll never know. Karen and Bunny going down the hall in their coats. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Oh. They know that they're supposed to stagger their lunch hours. Oh. Oh, is that all you can say? No, I suppose they do know they're supposed to stagger their lunch hours. Then why aren't they staggering them? Well, they couldn't very well stagger today. Oh, but I do hope they get something to eat. It's not healthy to work on an empty stomach. And they can't stagger them, why? Well, they wouldn't have time. They may not even get there. Get where? The airport. The airport? Whatever for? Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. And it's quite clear that you're taking elaborate pains not to. Not at all, Sylvia. It's just that you wouldn't have time to get there anyway. So there's no point in you getting upset about it because the Times is perfectly well represented. Represented? What? Jacques Matou. Jacques Matou? Dear me, you did get upset, didn't you? Jacques Matou? Oh, good grief. Oh, I hope that Karen can get an interview with him. Well, that is broad-minded of you, Sylvia. Oh, and I had to be at that bourgeois luncheon. Well, we'll, we'll just have to hope that Karen can handle it. Well, that is broad-minded of you. Even now, I mean. What do you mean, even now? Even now that Karen isn't working here? What did you say? Karen isn't working here. She's gone back to work for the examiner. She's working where? The examiner. You know, they print their street edition on green paper. So she just left? She didn't say anything at all? No, I believe there was a message. She said, tell Miss Gale. And that wasn't quite it. Tell La Gale. Yes, that was it. Tell La Gale to blow herself out. <laughs> but you won't have to worry. Bunny got the interview. You said Bunny to interview Jacques Matou? Dear me, no. I would have let Jacques Matou get totally ungrounded with his entire spring collection. And time for wouldn't know what to wear next spring. No, Bunny thought of it herself. And I was right proud of her for thinking of it. Reporting. That's why Ernest Goldman was here to steal my reporter. Well, not exactly. He was here to propose to Lucy May, though he didn't realize it at the time. Lucy May Palmer? Yes, but you won't have to worry. We, we have scooped the examiner on that one. Julia, see, we took pictures. I have a headache, Kitty. If you need me, I'll be in the first day. <laughs> Miss Owens. Yes, Mrs. Jacobson. S E N. Yes.
Yes, you'll be right. And tomorrow in the newspaper. Goodbye. Who milked the lady cobra? <laughs> <laughs> I passed her in the hall, and she didn't even kiss at me. Do cobras kiss? Peggy, whenever you get that tone in your voice, I know you've been up to perfectly delightful mayhem. <laughs> How would that? What have you been up to? Well, I suppose it could be Karen and Jacques Maturi. You see, Karen has gone back to work for the examiner. And so, funny, an interview with Jacques Matou. Jacques Matou. Well, that would explain Sylvia's power. Darling Peggy, who but you would dream of sending Bunny to interview Jacques Matou? Oh, but I did think of it. Bunny thought of it herself. And I was proud of her. Well, I'm glad we're rid of Karen anyway. She had come between us, my pet, for too long. Here. Well, I'm glad she's back at the examiner, if for no other reason than to force sand in Ernest Sullivan's typewriter. Goodness. Peggy, you're not really in love with him, are you? Well, it looks as if he's going to marry Lucy May. Lucy May? Lucy May? He chose her hurt. Over you? Over the whole world? Well, Kylie, um, do not quote any saccharine phrases from your column about love or connubial bliss, or I shall be sick in this very room. Nobody likes my column, but I guess everyone reads it. Where's Shadow? Shadow?